Okay, we're working with the MC delta T equation again, but we're doing some fancier things with it now. At least we are in questions A and C of this example, but if you don't mind, let's start with B because it's much easier and it'll get us warmed up. B is a simpler class of problem that you've probably seen already. We've said that when temperature for something changes, the energy transferred equals the mass of the thing times its specific heat times the temperature change that happened to it. And in this case we're talking about 100 grams of water. The specific heat for water is, I would normally say 4.19, but in this problem they tell us to use a slightly tweaked value. And so, okay, we can do that, 4.184. I don't know why they want us to change that up, but I'm sure there's a temperature where water specific heat is that, so can do. 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. And the temperature change, they say the temperature was raised by 3.2 degrees, so 3.2 degrees Celsius. So the units the specific heat has are joules, grams, and degrees Celsius. When you're using this, your mass has to be in grams to match this, and your temperature has to be in Celsius degrees to match also. So when those cancel out, there go the grams, there go the degrees. You can see we're going to get an answer in joules, which is exactly what an energy should be. And it comes out to 100 times 4.184 times 3.2. I get 1,338. 0.88 joules. Now, how many sig digs for that? This mass has four. The temperature has four. The specific heat they gave us has four. I'm sorry, the temperature has three. <laughs> and the specific heat they gave us has four. So this is our worst measurement, only three significant digits. Because of that, we must trim this down to three significant digits. Unfortunately, you can't write 1,339 with or eight with three significant digits, so we have to go to scientific notation. This will come out to be 1.34 times 10 to the 3 joules. Why 4? Because I'm keeping three sig digs, which means this is the last digit I'm keeping. And so I'm keeping 133, three, and then I look one digit to the right, say, okay, this is your last chance to have any impact. If you're five or more, I'm going to round up. It is five or more, therefore this three gets bumped up to a four. In other words, this number is closer to 134 than it was to 133. So that's our finished answer for that one. Now, the new thing that we're doing here is, this is what we call a heat loss equals heat gained problem. It's what happens when you take something hot and something cold and put them in contact and then just stand back and let let physics happen. What happens here is we have 50 grams of pretty hot water mixed with 50 grams of cold water. What happens when you mix those intuitively we know is you're going to get a container of lukewarm water. The hot water is going to cool down, the cold water is going to warm up, and they're going to meet at some in-between temperature. So the hot water starts at 80, the cold water starts at 5, and the cold water is going to warm up, the hot water is going to cool down. They're going to meet at some temperature that I'm going to call T because we don't know what it is yet. And we're going to have to find that T, which is going to take a little bit of setup. So just looking at the hot water for a second, let's go slightly reddish for the hot water. How much energy is the hot water going to lose if it goes from 80 down to T? I'll put E with a subscript hot, so we know what we're talking about. This is going to be its mass, 50 grams, times its specific heat, 4.184, because we're still on that page. The temperature change is, well, it started at 80 and it fell down to T. 80 minus T. That T is the final temperature. 
Okay, I'm just going to leave that alone for a moment. Now, if you're really watching like a hawk how I set these up, you've probably noticed that I'm not following the delta T standard that they use here. They tell you for deltas to do the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So where did you end up minus where did you start? And that's the opposite of what I did here. This final minus initial is correct for almost every application. This is very good and it's I'm glad that they said this, but what I'm doing here with these energies is I want them to come out positive. Getting negative numbers for an energy like this can cause trouble later. So I put these in an order that I knew would come out positive. 80 is our higher temperature, and T is a temperature that's lower than that. It could be 40 or 50 or something. So 80 take away 40 or 50 will come out positive. So I'm putting this in the order that makes it come out to be a positive value. In other words, the cheat I'm doing is my delta T is the higher temperature minus the lower temperature instead of final minus initial. I promise we'll be glad we did this. Okay, what about the cold water? The hot water is absor absorbing energy. The cold water must be losing energy and we can work that out as well or we can at least get an expression for it. Its mass is 50 grams. Its specific heat is 4.184 because it's water too. Joules per gram degree Celsius. Its temperature is going to be T minus 5. And I put them in that order because I want the higher temperature minus the lower one so that this comes out positive. Fair enough. So higher temp minus lower temp, higher temp minus lower temp. Now, what lets us solve this thing is that these two energies have to be equal. This energy that's being lost by the hot water, that's the exact same energy that the cold water is soaking up. It's like you pay, if you pay someone $20, the same $20 that you just lost is that same $20 that the other person just acquired. So those amounts have to match because you're talking about the same, the same bill. It's just, it's a loss for you and a gain for the other one. The energy being transferred in this problem is a loss for the hot water and a gain for the cold water, therefore they are the same. And that's what people mean when they talk about heat lost equals heat gained. Or the way I'm writing it here, the energy lost by the hot water equals the energy gained by the cold water. Now I just wrote that but I'm going to erase it because I need the space. And for the energy lost by the hot water, I'm going to write all this. 50, 4.184, 80 minus T equals the energy gained by the cold water, all this, 50, 4.184, 4 T minus 5. Okay, this is an algebraic expression. We should be able to solve it for t. Um, in general, what we would do now is go 50 times 4.184 and then distribute that through these brackets. 50 times 4.184 over here and distribute through the, those brackets. But there's a shortcut that they've given us because these numbers match so nicely. Both sides have a 50. Let's just divide both sides by 50 and that drops out. Both sides have 4.184 because they're both water, so that can drop out also. And that's going to save us a little bit of hassle. That means our equation turns into 80 minus t equals t minus 5. Um, if you add t to each side, because I want to get all my t's on one side so I can solve for it, and if I add 5 to each side, these t's cancel out, goodbye, these 5's cancel out, goodbye, and we get 85 equals 2t. Divide both sides by 2, and we get the t, our final temperature, is 42 and a half degrees. Now, just before we go on, you might have noticed this temperature is exactly between 80 and 5. It's like the average of 80 and 5. 
that only happened because these were identical amounts of material with identical specific heats because they were both water. So don't please don't think that you can just average the temperature every time. That only works if we have very carefully selected conditions like in question A. In C down here where we have a little chip of iron dropped into a big container of water, the temperature will not be right in the middle. It'll be something else. And speaking of which, let's get this one started. So we have a little chunk of iron, 5 grams is like the size of a, a Smarty or something like that, at pretty high temperature, 75 degrees. You could hold that in your hand, but not for a real long time. Added to 150 grams of cool water, and again they're going to meet at some final temperature. The iron starts out at 75, the water starts out at 15, the iron's going to cool down to some in-between temperature T, and the water will warm up to that same temperature, and then we'll get to an equilibrium where everyone's at the same temp. So, just like with the water problem, we're going to have the energy lost by the hot iron, and the energy soaked up by the cold water. And let's get expressions for each of those. The energy of the iron will be the mass of the iron, 5 grams, the specific heat for the iron, and they gave it to us, 0 0.444. And the temperature change for the iron, well, it's starting at 75 and it's dropping to T, which could be in the 30s or 20s or we'll see. Okay, and the energy for I'm trying to conserve space because this is going to take a couple lines. The energy absorbed by the water will be its mass, 150. The specific heat for water, I would normally say 4.19, but on this page we're supposed to use 4.184, so okay, we can do that. And the temperature change for the water is it's starting at 15, it's going up to T. I'm writing T minus 15. For the same reason as in the previous question, I want these to come out positive. I know the final temperature is going to be higher than 15 degrees. It has to be T minus 15. And so that final temperature, take away 15, is still going to be a positive number. As before, this energy and this energy are one and the same. It's being sucked out of the iron and absorbed by the water. So we can say that these two amounts are equal. And that gives us 5 times 0 0.444 times 75 minus T equals 150 times 4.184 times T minus 15. Okay, now it gets a little algebra-y. First of all, these are just numbers and we can multiply these. We can do 5 times 0 0.444, and over on this side we can do 150 times 4.184. Then instead of two numbers out front, we'll just have one. That's an improvement. 5 times 0.444 is 2.22. So here we get 2.22. 75 minus T. On this side we do 150 times 4.184 and we get 627.6 and then we have T minus 15. Okay, so Again, what I did there is just combine these two numbers by multiplying to get the 2.22 and multiply these two numbers together and that gave me the 627.6. It's just a small amount to clean up. Next, think about what you do. What, what if you had like 2, 5 minus x in math class? You'd distribute this 2 through here, right? You'd go 2 times 5 is 10 and then you'd go 2 times negative x is negative 2x and you'd carry on from there. We're doing exactly that here. The stuff they taught you in math class really does work. 
and here it means we have to take 2.22 times 75 and 2.22 times negative t. Uh, 2.22 times 75 is 166.5. These are not going to be nice numbers, as you probably guessed already. 2.22 times negative t is just minus 2.22t. And on the right, the same thing happens. This 627.6 .6 multiplies by t, which is easy enough. It also multiplies by negative 15. 627.6 .6 times 15 is 9,414. OK. So you remember what we did in the previous problem. We wanted to get all our t's onto one side of this equation and all our plain old numbers onto the other. So you can think of that as adding, or the other way people think of this, I'll do this one just a smidge differently. They'll say, I will take this minus 2.22t and move it to the right-hand side, and when I do, it will become positive. And they'll say, I will also move this minus 9414 over to the left side, and when I do, that will become positive also. Its sign changes when you move it to the other side of an equation. If you think that way, that is perfectly fine. That works. I sometimes think that way, too. And so what does that give us? On the right, we have 627.6t plus 2.22t is 629.82t. And on the other side, we have 166.5 plus 9414 is 9580. Five. Um, it might bug you that I was moving all my t's over to the right side when I wrote this line, and I was moving all my numbers over to the left, but here I've switched it around. It's legal to do that whenever you wish. I always like to have my variables on the left side. It's just a thing that makes me happy. So if you want to, if you wrote this 9580.5 equals 629.82t, great, no problem. We'll have the same answer in just a moment. To finish this off, the last thing you do to get t by itself is you divide both sides by 629.82. So, 629.82, and when you divide like that, you get t equals 15.21 degrees. So, that means the iron cooled down substantially. It went from 75 degrees down to 15.2 degrees. The water hardly changed at all. It went from 15.0 degrees up to 15.21 degrees, which is hardly anything. That's not surprising because, first, there's way more water than iron. This is 5 grams of iron against 30 times that much water. Also, the specific heat for water is really high. It's one of the highest we have at 4.184. Iron's specific heat is almost, it's like 10% as great as that of water, so its ability to change water's temperature is not very great at all. So, yes, this number does make sense. The, the iron was heavily overmatched. It had a disadvantage in its size, and it had another disadvantage in that its specific heat is not nearly as high as water's.